This is Seconds Out. This is Joe Lee and Danny Flex. And this is what we've decided to call Unfinished Business. We're going to talk about the fight between Triple G and Sal Canelo Alvarez, the third potential fight that could be happening, what needs to happen for that to happen, the politics involved, who they could both fight in, bet in between in the meantime, and also the past two fights, how we think uh, they went, how we scored them, everything like that. There's a lot to talk about. So, Danny, I'll come to you now. How are you? And what are your thoughts on what we decided to call unfinished business? Yeah, I mean, there seems to be a, a clamour in certain quarters to see them go at it for a third time. The first two fights certainly delivered. I, I've watched them both, really, really enjoyed them. Um, but there's equally a, a large amount of people who, who want to see Canelo take on new challenges um, rather than face Triple G again. But he's kind of he won't go away, Gennady Golovkin. You know, he's got a middleweight world title. He's still performing well. We saw him. In his last fight, albeit against an overmatched opponent in Camille Zerometa, um, but just looked as good as ever in that fight, and no reason to kind of for him to fear a third fight with Canelo based on that performance. They're both still contracted to the zone as a broadcaster, albeit um, with different promoters, and it looks, at least from the outside, a, a relatively easy fight to make, especially with the recent <laughs> talk of Canelo fighting perhaps three or four times this year. I mean, you'd think so, but I'll put it to you. I'll put it straight away. Do you think Canelo wants this third fight? I don't know. I mean, I think the main selling point of the third fight is that no conclusive victor was found in the first two. And I think Canelo may see agreeing to a third fight with Triple G as agreeing with that um, uh, yeah. idea, that notion. Whereas he probably feels he, he won um, both fights, but certainly the second fight, he probably feels he won clearly. Um, not many people out there perhaps would agree with him on that, but he's a proud Mexican warrior, you know, and he's, but also he's progressed a lot further since their two fights than Triple G has. You yeah. know, Gennady Golovkin's still a world champion and still performing at a higher level, but Canelo's gone through the weights. He's now a four weight world champion. The, the opponents Canelo's face since those two fights with Gennady Golovkin have been so much higher ranks. I mean, if you look at the Callum Smith fight, he made Callum Smith look like any mandatory challenger, but he was challenging for, for belts as well. It, 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 was, it was a completely dominant performance. And for me, I, I'd agree with you, Canelo's looked so much better since those fights. Uh, if you look at Triple G versus Derevchenko, he took some big hits that night. It was rumoured that he was ill, things like this, but um, it, it just wasn't his best night at all. Obviously, we've seen him fight Steve Rolls. He, he knocked him out, and then he knocked out um, Sarameta last weekend. But yeah, I think the, the two with the better opponents and the better victories is obviously Canelo. Uh, however, I will say the first two fights was a fight of fine margins, both of them. Very, very close. The, the second one for me was uh, in Gigi's favour more heavily um, after watching it again. Before we talk about the third fight a little bit more, how did you score the first two fights? Um, so the first one I had a draw. No, sorry. The first one I had Triple G winning marginally. I can't remember the exact score. And the second one I had a draw. Because I remember saying that and a lot of people kind of disputed it and saying it was clear for Triple G, even though Canelo got the victory. So for me, I had 7-5 Triple G in the first one, but I'm I'm open to admit it could easily have been a 6-6. Six, six. That one was literally the finest of margins. And I <clears throat> both times I listened to it was with commentary. So maybe I was swayed a couple of times. It is hard. And sometimes you do genuinely have to mute the TV. I know you watched the Canelo one last week, I believe, without any commentary at all it does as a boxing fan sometimes you don't understand how much you can be swayed by commentary so in fairness that might have been the reasoning behind that one so the first one I gave seven five to triple g and then the second one I gave eight four to triple g I thought it was a, a clean um very concise performance from triple g I didn't expect it going into the fight but after watching it again I thought it was a much more dominant than the first one and um and yeah, I'll give, I'm two up to Triple G, but the first one a bit a bit tighter. Yeah, I mean, last week's fight, I didn't... Uh, was it last week, Callum Smith? Or the week before? I didn't uh, mute the commentary solely to um, escape from commentator bias. I think I was listening to something else at the same time on another device. Oh. So I was kind of multitasking as much as yeah. I'd like to claim otherwise. 
Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought Canelo performed better in the second fight. Um, so kind of different from, from your perspective on it. I thought he changed up his style quite a lot. He thought he was a lot more on the front foot in the second fight. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I thought that was quite effective, particularly in the middle rounds. Um, but it's open to interpretation. What I would say is that since those two fights, that kind of style of pressing on the front foot, fainting, yeah. trying to make the opponent um, lead so he can counter, he's developed that and got better at that yeah. since. We saw that against Kovalev. He was very patient. We saw it against Callum Smith, where he was consistently on the front foot. And I think he's honed that style now to, to a T. And I think that would give Golovkin a lot of problems, particularly if the rematch ends up being at 168 rather than 160 pounds. I agree. And actually, while we're on that topic of where and, and what weight the, the third fight could be at, where do you think it should be at? Because if you look at the judges, I, I don't want to you know delve too much into it, but it was they've obviously been in Canelo's home, if you like, or whatever. Where do you think a fair fight would be? For, for I, don't, I don't think anywhere in the US, and it has to be in the US really to make money. I don't think there's anywhere where it's going to be completely impartial. You know, I don't want to make any allegations that I can't support. No. But, you know, Canelo's a huge attraction in Texas. He's a huge attraction in Nevada, Las Vegas. You know, Los Angeles, huge Mexican community in California. There's nowhere really where you'd call it a completely level playing field. I suppose Triple G got built up into more of an attraction on the East Coast. But it's very rare you see a fight this big that ends up in the East Coast. You know, the Barclays Centre or whatever grew and grew as a, you know, a, a venue. But I don't see it being there. But that somewhere on the East Coast would be the closest you'd get to 50-50. But Canelo's the biggest attraction in the sport. You know, he's the one making the most money for sanctioning bodies, for venues, for um, local economies. So if there is any um, nefarious activity to be had, it's always going to go in his favour. No, that makes 100%. It, it 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 makes sense, um, but you do feel for Triple G. But that's not you know it's not that's not what boxing's all about. And one thing I will say, just on what I said a couple of moments ago, uh, with the commentary, when the fights are so close, being a commentator, I can't imagine how hard that'd be. Like trying to judge it live whilst thinking of so many other things, whilst commentating everything that's happening right now, while scoring the fights, um, it, it must be a tough job. But uh, yeah, it, the fights have, have just been so close, which is why, for me, I definitely want to see this third fight. What are your thoughts on a potential third fight? Is that something you want to see, or would you rather see Canelo versus Triple... Um, sorry, versus Billy Joe Saunders first, Triple G versus, I don't know, Callum Smith first? Who, who would you rather see instead of that fight, or do you just want to see this this trilogy being made? It's a hard one. Like, if it was made, I'd definitely watch it and I'd look forward to watching it because I really enjoyed the first two. I wouldn't be, like, massively excited about it, though, because I just think Triple G has either stayed on the same level or slightly, ever so slightly declined since they last met, whereas Canelo's just got better and better. Yeah. I think going into the first two fights on paper, they looked 50-50. I don't think a third fight would. I think mm -hmm. if it was at £160, that makes it more intriguing. Um, yeah. Because we haven't seen Canelo get down to that for a while. And he's obviously very muscular and thick set. I don't think it would be. Yeah, I don't know if he'll ever get back down to that. But if he does, that makes it more interesting. Triple G's not a big middleweight. He, he's yeah. a normal size middleweight. I think, you know, going up against super middle, he's conceding even more natural size and strength to Canelo, which makes it even more in Canelo's favour. Yeah, I mean, I sound really biased in GGG's favour here. But if he was to go up, I think there's only one tactic that... Gennady Golovkin could use in his third fight and that's go for the knockout because of how the first two fights have gone to the decision he thought he weren't and he didn't so if he was to go to the knockout for the knockout it's better having more weight on you however it's going to be risky Canelo's improved so for me I think Canelo wins that third fight um, and, and I think he's just since since that he's just pushed on way too much and and the gap has now increased from from what it was a level playing field now I think they've both improved but yeah for me Canelo's had the tougher opponents and he's improved on his skill set that the body shots have got even more deadly and I don't think Triple G could handle that for a third time yeah I mean let's see Canelo go up against someone with a style we haven't seen him against for a little let's while go as well. Saunders. get it on <laughs> Saunders yeah or Andrade who's got a similar style but is like a bigger rangier version perhaps of Billy Joe Saunders um yeah. wouldn't mind seeing that one of the Charlos um Jamal is obviously at the higher weight class at the moment wouldn't mind seeing that um Caleb Plant 
I'd quite like to see that fight as well. And there's loads of fights I wouldn't mind seeing Canelo in. I think he beats probably all of them, but I'd still be intrigued to watch them. But Terbiev, obviously, if he ventures up to 175, that's a big fight. There's so much out there for Canelo. And then even if you look at Triple G, there's plenty of good fighters and big name fighters still at 160 as well. You know, we just talked about Andrade and, and Charlo. Their last fights were both at 160. I don't see why he couldn't fight those guys there. And there'll be people coming up from lower weights as well. You know, Errol Spence talks about moving up to fight Canelo at 160. Canelo's probably not going to make 160 again, but Triple G's there. Why not make Errol Spence against Triple G? I know it's harder to make with politics and stuff, but still. Well, to put it plain and simple then, what does Saul Canelo Alvarez gain from this third fight? He's already won one. He's drawn the other and they've been close. What does he really gain from it? And this is the thing, because he probably thinks he won both. I think there's probably a genuine dislike on his part for Triple G as well. So does he want to give him a payday and an opportunity to finally get a win against him? A bit like Pacquiao Marquez, you know, does he find Does he want to give him, if he keeps giving him chances in close fights, eventually he's going to lose by the law of averages. <laughs> and he doesn't want to end up like Pacquiao did in that final Marquez fight, kind of spread eagled on the canvas, does he? I'm not saying I think that would happen. I think Canelo's got a great chin and Triple G maybe not be hitting as hard at 168 as he was at 160, but or yeah. at least Canelo be able to absorb the punches better. And he already had a great, great um, jaw. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's not much in the favour of doing it unless the zone, you know, are really willing to put up huge money for it. Canelo's a free agent now. So in theory, he'll go for whatever fight and whichever broadcaster is going to pay him the most money. The yeah. zone have got Triple G if they're willing to. But they've also got Billy Joe Saunders. So who, you know, at the zone, if they're going to offer him a huge amount of money for the Glovkin fight and he feels it's a relatively comfortable win for him, that's maybe what will swing it. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think that could be a possibility as well. As for GGG, what do you think he needs to do to get the fight? Because Canelo might not want it, Canelo might want it. We don't know about that. But GGG, we know, wants to fight. What does he need to do to get that trilogy? That, that's a much easier um, question to answer in that Canelo said that his short-term goal is to unify all the titles at 168 pounds. He's got two of them, um, and the other two are with Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant. So the obvious ploy for Triple G, and this might be easier because he is on the zone and he has got a good relationship with Eddie Hearn, is to fight Saunders. Um, you know, Saunders has signed for that fight Thanks. before, and it hasn't come to fruition. <clears throat> Put them two together. Winner fights Canelo because obviously he wants that belt. Um, yeah. Triple G gets the chance also to go into the fight as a two-weight world champion. Both on the zone. Big fight for the zone who have expanded and now available in the UK for however long for one ninety nine a month. That will change at some point, I'm sure, but I'm enjoying it at the moment. Especially now I know Campbell Garcia, oh, sorry, Garcia Campbell is going to be on at 11 o'clock, apparently, UK time. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. an unexpected <laughs> bonus for me. <laughs> uh, but getting, getting that aside, I think that's the obvious shortcut to a third Canelo fight is to win one of the remaining straps at £168. Well, I think uh, Eddie Hearn should be watching that because you've set out a perfect plan to, towards that third fight. You've, you've literally nailed it there. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, to be fair, Danny. I'm sure um, Eddie watches everything I'm on, you know. <laughs> and as a boxing fan, that makes sense because you get to see more fights with the bit of the, the top guys in the divisions. We don't see it enough in boxing, which is down to the politics. But um, if that can happen in 2021, we know Billy Joe Saunders needs a big fight. We've been saying it for so long now. He know he knows it. So if he can get an Andrade, then a Triple G or a Triple G straight, straight off the bat. He's had so many warm-ups now. He's fought in the last month. Let's just let's just let's just get that on. In my opinion, that would be um a massive fight for for UK fans and who knows Billy Joe Saunders could have the style to beat him and and as we know if he does beat him then he's definitely got the style to beat Canelo imagine Saunders beats uh, Golovkin in May and then upsets Canelo in September it'd be like the world <laughs> fighter of the year never mind British and where would first of all where would the first fight happen because obviously the second fight's going to be in America do you think Triple G there could be some there could be some chance that could happen in London Maybe. I mean, you know, we saw uh, Lomachenko come over to fight Campbell at the O2. So there is precedent for it. But I would imagine in terms of the time it needs to go out to, for it to be a pay-per-view or, or for it, sorry, for it to be big for the zone in the US um, where yeah. they've still got big ambitions. I think it would need to be in America. 
But yeah, I mean, there's a possibility it could be over here, but I would imagine it'd be on a Matchroom Boxing USA show um, in New York, perhaps, where, where Triple G is very popular and Saunders could be popular with the uh, expat community in New York and, and the Irish uh, community as well. Yeah, no, and what we're talking about now, if Billy Joe Saunders could pull that off, would be one of the greatest years for a boxer in, in boxing history. No question whatsoever. No one could deny that. If he went away to America twice in one year and defeated two of the Gnoff uh, isn't in the pound for pound rankings top five right now, but two of the greatest over the last 10 years or five years, however long, five years, in one year, he has to be up there with some of the greatest boxers to ever do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's amazing. And we've just mapped out like a dream sequence for Billy Joe Saunders, obviously. <laughs> Canelo and Triple G might not fancy that um, chain of events but you know I think it makes sense for Triple G and Canelo uh, sorry Triple G and Billy Joe Saunders to, to kind of play off for, for the right to meet the biggest attraction in the sport and the career high payday why not mm -hmm. why not why not I think um, that's a really good way to end it um, I've enjoyed the talk um, and I think the third fight is potentially going to be one of the most exciting but I think it's going to be the earliest stoppage well the only stoppage and I think it's going to be a stoppage for Canelo how do you see that third fight going yeah so well I don't know if he'll stop him I think it'll be a clear victory for Canelo Triple G's at 168 it makes him more vulnerable but I just think he's he's very strong he's always shown good chin but I just think Canelo's waiting for the right time isn't he before he concedes to that third fight and it's one of many things he learned from his loss to Floyd Mayweather is his timing is everything to kind of Semi quotes and day joy, <laughs> and I think Golovkin learned that because last um, on the 18th he he could have knocked him out about three times across the fight, but he knocked him down and and remained calm, and then eventually the knockout came. So yeah, I, I mean I'm just saying knockout just for the sake of it. It's a bit of fun, but I see Alvarez winning that for sure. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. I've really enjoyed this video. Before we end, actually, as soon as we're talking about some big fights, who do you think's been the, the fighter of the year? Not in terms of the break for anything like that. Pretty much out of Tiafimo Lopez, Tyson Fury, or Canelo, who's who's had the best year? Well, see, I kind of swerved this when I did um, reflections <laughs> on Monday in that I gave Tyson Fury British fighter of the year and Tiafimo Lopez international. But if I had to pick out of the two of them, I'd probably go for Tiafimo because Same. I think he had the bigger mountain to climb. That that's what I think, and and Fury's achievements is so great. But however, we we saw that the year we saw that in December 2018. So for me, and he just didn't get the decision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was it was less of a surprise because I thought Fury would win anyway. Like, and that doesn't take away from what Fury did. He did a, a shocking thing, and no one expected him to knock him out. But Lomachenko was riding on such a high that it was a bigger shock to me when Teofimo Lopez did what he did and Lo uh, Lomachenko barely got any rounds in that fight. So um, Teofimo Lopez is the, the fighter of the year for me and for you. And uh, and hopefully we can have a big 2021 as well with, yeah, <laughs> Billy Joe Saunders. Who knows? It could be a big year for him too. <laughs> Thanks for joining yeah. us. And, Great stuff. Uh, we'll Cheers, definitely. Mate.